funeral is planned for one of the victims killed in Tuesday's plane crash outside of Yoakum. A migrant was shot by a Texas National Guard soldier who was patrolling the Texas-Mexico border. And the University of Houston, Victoria joins with other Texas colleges in banning TikTok on their campuses. High temperature is 75 degrees on your day today. Cooler tomorrow and the rest of the week. Why? Rain's moving in. We'll give details coming up in the full forecast. And breaking news tonight, Victoria East High School announces its new head football coach for the upcoming season. That and more in sports. You're watching 25 News Now at 10. Good evening and thank you for joining us for 25 News Now at 10. I'm Don Brubaker. And I'm Karina Garcia. New at 10, around 420 this afternoon, two vehicles crashed along 1929 Southwest Moody Street, south of Tristan Street and Business 77. Victoria Police said each vehicle had one occupant, 22-year-old Caitlin Reyna and 39-year-old Landon Smith, both Victoria residents. Both were taken to DTAR Hospital with serious injuries, and BPD said that at last check around 7 p.m. this evening, they were both still alive. BPD believes that Reyna was driving southbound when she crossed over into the oncoming lane of traffic and collided with Smith head on. There were no passengers in either vehicle and VPD had the roadway cleared by 7.30 p.m. The first funeral is planned for one of the four victims killed in Tuesday's plane crash near Yoakum. Bill Garner was the executive pastor of Harvest Church near Memphis. He leaves behind six children and nine grandchildren. His service takes place Saturday at 11 a.m. at Harvest Church. The sole survivor remains in a San Antonio hospital. The Texas Tribune reports on Sunday, a Texas National Guard soldier shot a migrant just west of McAllen while patrolling the Texas-Mexico border. Angel Gallegos is the soldier who fired the shot. He is an infantryman assigned to the border as part of Governor Greg Abbott's Operation Lone Star. This is the first known incident since the mission began in which a soldier has shot and injured a migrant. Records indicate that the migrant had no firearms or any other weapons during the incident. The migrant's injury is not life-threatening. Thursday is the birthday of Confederate General Robert E. Lee, which Texas marked as a state holiday for 50 years. Representative Jarvis Johnson has introduced legislation to abolish Confederate Heroes Day. The holiday also honors Confederate President Jefferson Davis and others who fought on behalf of the Confederacy. Lawmakers in Texas introduced legislation aimed at ending Confederate Heroes Day since 2015, yet none of the measures became law. Last night, the Uvalde CISD Moving Forward with Foundation hosted its second community meeting on plans for the new school. The foundation is tasked with building a more secure school to replace Robb Elementary following last May's mass shooting. The foundation also plans to build a memorial park on the same grounds where the school once stood. Construction on the $50 million school is expected to begin this summer and hopes to open in fall of 2024. TikTok is gone from the University of Houston, Victoria. UHV officials tell us they ended all activity on all of its university-managed TikTok accounts following the governor's order last month. UHV officials say they have not made any changes to the university's Wi-Fi or internet systems as it relates to the order. ABC 13 reports the University of Houston has sent a letter to everyone in its system ending TikTok activity on all of its accounts. Let's take a first look at your forecast with First Warren Storm Team meteorologist Trey Minding. Trey? And high today was 75 degrees, low was 44 degrees, which is on target exactly for our normal low, but 10 degrees above our normal high. Our temperatures the next couple of days beginning tomorrow will get closer to the normal numbers around here. And also the rain chances will be on the rise too, catching up on much of the rain. Had zero for quite a while. It looks like we get some good soaking rains in the forecast. When will they be exactly? Well, in a couple of times down the next couple of days. I'll let you know when they are exactly coming up later in my full forecast. Trey, thank you. Every Thursday, the CDC puts out the latest COVID-19 community transmission levels for counties throughout the USA. Victoria, Calhoun, and Lavaca counties, COVID-19 transmission levels drop from high to medium. DeWitt County remains at high. The CDC also lists Jackson and Goliad counties at medium COVID-19 community transmission level. It's been nearly a year since the war began in Ukraine. 
A UN report estimates more than 7,000 civilians have died, and in December, an aide to Ukrainian President Volensky said they lost up to 13,000 Ukrainian soldiers. The U.S. estimate is much higher. They've been through the valley of the shadow of death. Most, but not all, made it out of the valley alive, but not unscathed. On this stretch of road overlooking the battles for Bakhmut and Solidar, it's just safe enough to deliver the wounded to medics. Strewn along the road, a blood-stained stretcher, a discarded, bloodied flak jacket. These troops are just back from the front at Solidar. They took wounded. They were facing Wagner fighters. They say those fighters were attacking in waves. Now they're going back to safer ground. The combat they saw was intense. There were regular troops, says this soldier, and in front of them just meat, convicts, in packs, on drugs, without armor, without helmets. For them, life has no value. Down in the killing fields, the shelling goes on without let up. For the medics, there is no rest. Sometimes the mortars don't give us any breathing space, Anatolia medic tells me. We have many casualties from shrapnel, and when the snipers come, then there are many dead and wounded. Troops transfer a fallen comrade from their armored car to a van. Here, the shadow of death hangs heavy. Ben Wiedemann, CNN, outside Bakhmut. The U.S. Supreme Court still does not know who leaked a draft opinion from the case reversing Roe v. Wade. A report says the court should implement better policies in the handling of sensitive information. On May 2nd of 2022, Political published the draft opinion from the Dobbs case two months before the opinion was released to the public on June 24th. Chief Justice John Roberts has asked the marshal of court to investigate. And this brings us to your viewer poll this evening. Scan that QR code right there on your screen to participate. The question is, do you think we will ever know who leaked the Supreme Court draft opinion? Yes or no? We take a look at those results and 18% say yes and 82% say no. We want to hear from you tomorrow in our latest viewer poll. Make sure to stay tuned for that. Texas lawmakers have released draft budget plans that would have set aside $15 billion to trim homeowners' property tax bills. The tentative plans show a hike in state education spending to reduce the burden of local taxpayers. The spending plans filed by the House and Senate lead budget writers offer a look on how Republican leaders are approaching the state's $32.7 billion surplus. A Massachusetts nonprofit organization which sends care packages to U.S. Armed Forces overseas hopes the U.S. Postal Service will rethink their newly announced price hike for flat rate shipping. The nonprofit says the change could put them out of business. Let's stick with what works. For 20 years, Wendy Rocca and her dedicated squad of volunteers at Operation American Soldier have sent care packages to our troops deployed overseas, folks like George McMaster's son. Well, he was just, uh, you know, thankful that no one had forgotten him over there. Working out of the basement of the Marine Corps League in Watertown, 1,700 boxes went out last year. Comfort items ranging from peanut butter to toilet paper, along with a personal note of thanks for their service. But the nonprofit says a change by the Postal Service threatens it all. I can't fathom why they would do this. That's because next week, the flat rate box that many nonprofits have used for years to send military care packages is going away. This is what the post office is scrapping, the regional rate B box, which costs these volunteers just over 14 bucks to ship overseas. Their only other flat rate option would be this slightly larger box, which will cost them more than 21 bucks. Now, they're going to add six bucks a box because they're taking this away? It doesn't work. And if they pack their own boxes, they'll be charged by weight and size, more expensive and more difficult. 
They understand the U.S. Postal Service is drowning in red ink, but don't think a gut punch to nonprofits serving our troops makes cost saving sense. It's a good program, and I would hate to see it have to end. This is a great, great service to the troops, and, and, and it's going to be cut way back. Cut way back because their 25 grand annual shipping budget could balloon by a third or more. So they're hoping for an 11th hour political Hail Mary to keep on packing. Bring back these boxes. It's not that hard. The Newport News Virginia teacher who was shot by a six year old is out of the hospital. 25 year old Abby Zwerner was hurt on January 6th. The boy's parents said the firearm was secured, but he suffers from a disability and was under a care plan which involved the parents going with him to class each day. But the shooting happened the first week his family was not in school with him. The school has remained closed since the shooting. Stay with us coming up on 25 News Now at 10. Former Houston Texans player Jarrell Poe among two men arrested and charged with kidnapping. Also ahead, firefighters vital a massive fire at a marijuana grow facility in north central Oklahoma. Steve Harvey has this baby blue leather jacket, and when you touch it, the cow went moo. <laughs> Friday, the chic Kristen Chenoweth. Please tune in Sundays at 11 a.m. on KAVU Channel 25, Sudden Link Channel 4, to view the First Baptist Church weekly service. From the moment you wake up until it's time to go to sleep again, we know you have to wear many hats. When you're ready to be you again, the why is here. 2023 is the year to take all that you've been given and turn it into something stronger, bigger, better. 2023 is the year of strength, accountability, and accomplishment. This year, be you. Be a member. Visit ymcagoldencrescent.org to schedule a tour today. Over the past month, there have been several burglaries involving a suspect throwing a brick through the front door of a closed business and then stealing a cash register from inside the business. Investigators believe these incidents may be connected. The most recent burglary occurred on September 1st. If you have any information about these burglaries, submit a tip to Victoria Crime Stoppers at 361-572-4200. All tips are anonymous. If you give information that leads to arrest or charges being filed, you could earn a cash reward. Shop naked and save at the homestead. You can take it home and stain it tonight. What in tarnation? The homestead's gone rustic. Mosey on over and check out the store today. It wasn't going over to get to the yapping dog, to play with it, no. to attack it. Was it a pet? Your dog got out of your control. Or a predator. The dog bit me, grabbed my leg. My dog popped out of my arms. When I got up, I didn't know the dog got my dog by his neck. And there's enough hurt to go around. Did they quarantine her dog? They quarantined her dog, but they also put him down, too. Next Judge Judy. Southwest Airlines pilots calling for a strike authorization vote to begin in May. The Houston Chronicle reports the union represents more than 10,000 pilots who work for the Dallas-based carrier. The pilots have asked for upgrades to the airline's information technology, which was largely blamed for Southwest's terrible response to last month's major winter storm. In Mississippi, two men arrested and charged with kidnapping. One of those people arrested, a former Houston Texans player. Former Ole Miss and NFL defensive lineman Jarrell Poe and Gavin Bates said nothing as they entered the Ridgeland Courthouse to face charges of kidnapping a man who was allegedly leading a medical marijuana growing operation. The victim had been uh, taken against his will out of Laurel, Mississippi and brought up here overnight. They stayed in uh, Pearl 
and then uh, came to the Chase Bank. And the reason they end up in Ridgeland is because there's just a Chase Bank here. Poe is a defensive lineman standout at Ole Miss, who later went on to play for the Kansas City Chiefs and Houston Texans. According to police, Poe and Bates brought the victim to the Chase Bank in Ridgeland, hoping to recoup some $300,000 they and others invested in a medical marijuana growing operation, but saw very little return on their investments. The whole time, it's, it's just been shady. Um, Did you help kidnap him? No. Keith Stovall says he worked with Poe and Bates on the marijuana project that never grew into anything. He says the alleged victim, Bryce Mathis, was supposedly bringing Poe and Bates to the bank to return their investment money of $300,000. That's how they ended up over here to the Chase Bank, because Bryce was supposed to give them the money back. And it turns out to where he went in the bank and said, because he couldn't produce the money, that they kid, that uh, Jarrell was kidnapping him. I probably is something to do with self-help, but you can't break the law and engage in kidnapping to collect on a debt. But yes, it's a kidnapping case. Prosecutors say there is much more to this case that will be revealed at a later date, but the charges are for a reason. Well, we're not going to try the case out here in public, but you can rest assured that in Ridgeland we would not have arrested them and charged them with kidnapping if it wasn't kidnapping. A massive fire broke out at an Oklahoma marijuana grow facility today. At around 9.30 a.m., fire crews were called to a possible fire at the grow facility in north central Oklahoma. Firefighters battled back flames shooting from the warehouse. Nearby residents were evacuated while businesses in the area were told to shelter in place. One firefighter had minor injuries and was treated and released from a local hospital. The cause of the blaze is now under investigation. A healthy diet alone can lower the risk for several diseases. But for dementia, it may need to be combined with other lifestyle choices. Here's more. Researchers from Lund University in Sweden analyzed healthy eating and risk for dementia. They looked at a healthy diet that followed standard nutritional guidelines and the Mediterranean diet, which consists of legumes, vegetables, and low amounts of red meat and dairy. After following participants for 20 years, the researchers found neither lowered the risk of dementia on its own. The study suggests a healthy diet may need to be accompanied by other habits, such as exercise, and research indicates cardiovascular health may be key. The American Heart Association says the key to good cardiovascular health is eating right, exercising, limiting alcohol intake, and never using tobacco products. And as always, talk to your doctor about the best ways to lower your individual risk. With this Medical Minute, I'm Jay O'Brien, ABC News. Three people are sent to the hospital after a large sign fell on their parked car. The incident happened in a parking lot in Kentucky. Witnesses say wind blew the Denny's sign from its post. All three people hurt were in the car at the time of the unexpected fall. According to authorities, one passenger was critically hurt and taken to a hospital in Louisville, while the other two people were taken to another hospital. Temperature is currently in the 50s area wide and staying that way because of the cloud cover. It won't be as cool as it was this morning, but this signals rain chance in the forecast is definitely the increasing cloud cover. What are the rain percentages? We'll find out later on in my full forecast to come. Need weather around the clock? When the weather changes in the crossroads, you need a reliable source. Visit Interactive Radar online for the latest conditions in the crossroads area. Crossroadstoday.com. Weather at your fingertips. It's been a great year of Bravo Honda, but 2023 will be the best year yet. And that means amazing savings like a 2023 Civic for $279 a month and 3.9 financing for 48 months. Bravo! Marsha Gay Harden. I'm having an out of body experience right now. I was backstage and you were standing and you had your hand like this. <laughs> and I said, be quiet, she's praying. This is what I saw, people. <laughs> Plus, for missing, Storm Reed. I play June, a stubborn young teenage girl. Never met one. <laughs> <laughs> Never been one. Next live. the best moments from 22. I'm gonna knock your socks off right now. I don't have any on. Picked by you. I believe that is what America wants and deserves. <laughs> Live Viewer's Choice Show. 
Speed walking doesn't sound like it's intense, but one lap around the set and it's intense. <laughs>
News Center 25 at 6 and 10 is also heard on KVNN 1340 AM, Victoria's News Network. She claims she has driven drunk thousands of times. And I'm scared because I do have another DUI coming up. If you kill somebody driving drunk, you're going to jail. Three innocent children in a deadly car crash caused by a drunk driver. You will kill someone. Those were my three babies. It wasn't me, but it could have been me. What gives you the right to drive drunk? All new Dr. Phil. It wasn't going over to get to the yapping dog to play with it. No to attack it. Was it a pet? Your dog got out of your control. Or a predator. The dog bit me, grabbed my leg. My dog popped out of my arms. When I got up, I didn't know the dog got my dog by his neck. And there's enough hurt to go around. Did they quarantine her dog? They quarantine her dog, but they also put him down too. Next Judge Judy. Marsha Gay Harden. I'm having an out-of-body experience right now. I was backstage, and you were standing, and you had your hand like this, <laughs> and I said, be quiet, she's praying. This is what I saw, people. <laughs> Plus, for missing, Storm Reed. I play June, a stubborn young teenage girl. Never met one. <laughs> <laughs> Never been one. <laughs> Stay up to date with what's happening in the Crossroads by downloading the Crossroads Today mobile app. You'll get instant alerts to your phone or tablet the minute breaking news or weather happens. Only the free Crossroads Today mobile app features weather updates for local sports. The Crossroads Today app gives you the ability to stream our daily newscast when you're on the go and share pictures or tips straight to our newsroom and so much more. Brought to you locally by Prosperity Bank with 12 locations serving the Crossroads area. Patty Crossroads, breaking news tonight here in Victoria. Victoria East High School is hiring former New Caney football coach Charlie Reeve as its new head football coach. According to Victoria ISD Athletic Director Spencer Gant, quote, he's a good one and we are excited to have him back home, end quote. Reeve played at Victoria High School as a quarterback and coached college football for 12 years. He recruited and gave the only scholarship to former Victoria East quarterback Bailey Zappi when he was at Houston Baptist University, who is now a New England Patriot. Charlie Reeve is brother of Travis Reeve, who coached Cuero to their state title back in 2018. The Pepsi Athlete of the Week is a five foot one and a half inch soccer star from Victoria West High School who came up big in a redemption game that nearly ended her career last season. Redemption stories are no new thing when it comes to sports, and the striker from Victoria West was sure to get revenge against the team that cut her junior season short last year. Sofia Vedestegi injured her anterior talofibular ligament or ATFL, which is located on the outside of her dominant shooting ankle in the game against Flower Bluff last year. This injury sidelined the right-footed striker for the rest of the season and forced her to recover for eight months. As a captain on the team, she was sure to bring the intensity against the Hornets this year. My mindset was just get the goal in, get the goal in, because my mindset was already coming in that we weren't going to lose this game. So yeah, I wanted to get that first strike in and I knew as soon as that we got that first strike in, we were going to get another one. The senior scored in the 24th minute after a beautiful cross by her teammate was deflected and set Vedestigi up to put the ball in the back of the net. Her team would score another goal to ice the game and complete the revenge that Sophia had set in the beginning of the year. The eldest of two brothers and one sister said the goal was important, but it was also special that her family was there to celebrate with her. My mom, <laughs> my mom more, she was more the happiest. I could just see it on her face. As soon as I went over there and hugged her, she was like, I'm so proud of you. She was very happy because she, she knew my mindset coming into the game was I'm not going to lose it. I'm going to win and I was going to score. I asked her, I was like, did you record the, uh, the goal? And she was like, no. She's like, I like taking that moment in. Like I, 
that moment when you're happy, I'm happy, is just a moment, so yeah. Victoria West head soccer coach Courtney Stoltenberg described Sophia as a hard worker who leads by example and is vocal on and off the field. These are a few reasons why she is a captain on the team. The longtime soccer player has been playing what she calls the beautiful game since she was six years old and hopes to play at the next level down the road at UHV. Her goal this year is to make it past the third round of playoffs, but of course, a state title. Her redemption story, along with her great goal, is the reason why Sofia Vedestegui is the Pepsi Athlete of the Week. On the year, Sofia has two goals, three assists, and 12 steals. The Lady Warriors are 5-5-1 on the year, but are 1-0 in district. The new Pepsi Athlete of the Week and her team will take on CC Moody Friday in Corpus Christi. Without well, your sports, Don and Karina, back to you. By the way, welcome back to Victoria. Charlie Reeve, he did a great job at Victoria High. He's, he's had a great coaching career. All righty. Gino, any comment? <laughs> no, I'm excited to hopefully uh, speak with him here in the next couple of weeks or something. <laughs> so I just leave the sports to y'all, that's why. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we'll stay with us. Coming up on 25 News Now at 10, we'll take a last look at your weather. Plus, Instagram rolls, rolls out quiet mode for when users want to focus and study. Victoria All Sports, South Texas's largest family-owned sporting goods store. Having served Victoria and surrounding counties since 1971, we're proud to continue to meet your firearms, hunting, fishing, camping, and outdoor apparel needs. Our friendly and knowledgeable outdoor experts can help you pick the perfect equipment for your next outdoor excursion and that our in-house gunsmith services are available long after your purchase. Come get geared up at Victoria All Sports, located at 1902 Houston Highway, right here in Victoria. Texas Glass and Tinning, your local experts in auto glass replacements, is now offering recalibrations for your windshield replacements to get you back on the road safely. Texas Glass and Tinning has master auto technicians with over 20 years experience offering you prompt and exceptional service, insured, and servicing the Golden Crescent and surrounding areas. If it's glass, it's Texas Glass, Texas Glass and Tinting. Next live. Watch the best moments from 22. I'm going to knock your socks off right now. I don't have any on. Picked by you. I believe that is what America wants and deserves. Live's Viewer's Choice Show. Speed walking doesn't sound like it's intense, but one lap around the set and it's intense. <laughs> Instagram debuts quiet mode to help users focus and set boundaries with friends and followers. When the feature is turned on, notifications are paused and the profile's activity status will say in quiet mode. The company frames quiet mode to help with studying and to be used for teens who spend a specific amount of time on the app at night. Its parental supervision tools are also being upgraded. When a teen updates a setting, parents receive a notification of the change. Pizza Hut may have broken the record for the world's largest pizza on Wednesday. Workers covered much of the Los Angeles Convention Center floor with more than 14,000 square feet of dough, sauce, and cheese. It was so big they had to bake it in sections over the course of several hours. The pizza was donated to several charities. The event celebrated the return of the Big New Yorker to Pizza Hut's menu. The current record holder is a 13,000 square foot pizza made in Italy back in 2012. A couple more stats on this pizza. <laughs> Huge pizza. Um, they used more than 13,000 pounds of dough, uh, nearly 5,000 pounds of sauce. They could not put it, obviously, as you saw, you could, they could not put it in an oven. What they did was they had a cooking device to hover over Just the hover pizza, the pizza. <laughs> to oh bake it. Oh my goodness. All right, I'm, I'm getting hungry, so let's go to weather. <laughs> How's it going out there, Trey? How's it looking? And let's take a last look here. 60 degrees for a daytime high tomorrow. Rain chances beginning in the second half of the day. And Saturday, well, you better make other plans outside because it's going to be quite a soaker. 70% chance of rain on that day. Moving out by Sunday and Monday, sunny skies. Another rain chance on Tuesday. Wednesday and Thursday, highs near 60 degrees with sunny skies continuing. Lows in the 40s. Well, coming up in the morning, looking pretty nice but cool. Get ready for rainfall Friday into Saturday. Make it a great evening. 
And finally tonight, a horse chasing event took place in Japan to give horses an opportunity to make up for lack of exercise. This is a winter tradition at this farm. 86 horses, including 53 pregnant ones, circled an 800-meter course twice. The exercise is said to help the expecting horses give safe deliveries. Okay. The horses are scheduled to give birth between February and April. Good luck to those horses. Those are some hefty horses. That's Look at right. them. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you for joining us for 25 News Now at 10. Remember, we're streaming 24-7 on Crossroads Today Plus. Join Carolina Astrain and meteorologist Trey Mining for 25 News Now Sunrise starting at 5 a.m. Good night, everybody.